Hi everybody, uh, today we are going to see a game uh, played between uh, two players who are lesser known in the chess circles but one of the players is a player of Indian descent, Mir Sultan Khan. Now Mir Sultan Khan was born in 1905 and uh, in 1966 he passed away. Now very little is known about Mir Sultan Khan but uh, he was uh, he was he was a top class chess player who participated in several tournaments in India and he traveled to Britain uh, in 19, 1928 and uh, during during that time he played several tournaments the top level tournaments in Britain and winning the British championship three times uh, and uh, this was against a very very strong field uh, many times and uh, he is he is considered one of the chess greats even though not very well known perhaps if he was playing today certainly would have been of grandmaster strength and he did all this with very less uh, or very little chess knowledge because uh, he didn't have a kind of a traditional education he was not very well read or very well educated he didn't understand the language there was a language barrier so he was a, he was a natural natural born chess player and he has played some fantastic games and many of the games you can you can see on on youtube and i'll i'll put the links in the description below but uh, today i want to see i want to show you one game which which mir sultan khan played against uh, uh, another chess player uh, whose name was ch alexander now ch alexander was uh, kind of more famous for uh, working in cryptography and also working with uh, the british intelligence uh, working alongside alan turing uh, cracking the uh, code for the enigma uh, machine the Germans used to use to encrypt messages. Now, uh, Sage Alexander was also a two-time British champion and, uh, and and a pretty pretty decent player, uh, perhaps of international master strength. And now, uh, this game this game which was played 1932 in Hastings between uh, Sage Alexander and Mir Sultan Khan. So, so all right. So now uh, we have this uh, game between uh, Sultan Khan and Alexander. Uh, this played uh, played in Hastings in 1932. So uh, the first move of the game uh, started with with d4, uh, knight f6, knight to f3, uh, and d5. Uh, as as I as I mentioned, Sultan Khan was not not uh, somebody who's very well uh, educated in terms of opening understanding, opening knowledge as well. So he would he would play these offbeat uh, kind of openings, and his real strength was in the middle game and end game, as you'll see. Uh, the game continued g3, c5 which hits the d4 pawn, bishop to g2, knight to c6, c3 and then there was an exchange of pawns followed by the move e6. So both both sides are kind of developing harmoniously. The only problem for, for black in this position is his light squared bishop uh, which, which kind of comes to comes to play later on as you would see has a critical effect on the game. Castles bishop to d6 knight to c3 and castles here a normal developing move like bishop g5 could be thought about and and maybe uh, looking at looking at better better positioning of 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 white pieces or looking for break in the center would be one of the one of the plans in such a position the position is kind of closed so there's not much activity so things will kind of go, go in a slow measure here instead here uh, sultan khan goes for goes for this uh, a different setup here he, he kind of plays b3 with the idea of uh, putting the bishop along the long diagonal where uh, the bishop can uh, support the support the d4 pawn and also he can reroute the knight to a better position so after after a6 and knight to a4 uh, uh, the idea is simple that uh, maybe there is some kind of imbalance that can be struck here uh, perhaps knight can go to c5 and if the bishop is developing to d7 the knight can capture the bishop on d7 so uh, in this case black continues to develop with bishop d7 but instead of playing knight c5 immediately he plays a uh, bishop to b2 which just strengthens the pawn on d4 so here black continues with knight e4 which controls the c5 square thus preventing white from carrying out his manure of knight c5 and and maybe from c5 the knight could have come to d3 and and then knight can jump back to e5 as well so 
so here white has to play actively because uh, black's pieces uh, are uh, even the black's pieces are active the light squared bishop is, is a problem and therefore white plays with knight to e5 hitting the light squared bishop now that is a chance to kind of uh, get get rid of that bishop or just leave the bishop that that place and and have it exchanged uh, uh, but but knight c5 is a uh, bishop takes c5 or knight c5 is also bishop takes e4 and knight c5 is also a possibility in this position so so with that uh, with that kind of a, a, a threat uh, it is a very natural to kind of exchange the knight on e5 and after knight takes e5 pawn takes on e5 the bishop on d6 is attacked so you want to maybe move the bishop back to the e7 square and and then think of uh, maybe playing rook c8 and continuing development but the light square bishop does happen to be a problem for white and therefore thinking that it may be good to get get rid of the light square bishop black continues with bishop takes on a4 now when the bishop takes on a4 gets rid of the light squared bishop and uh, also gives a static weakness for for white uh, therefore after b takes on a4 uh, that is certainly a potential weakness for for white uh, the pawn is right now protected by the queen but it can come under fire later on uh, as pieces get exchanged so white has to do something very quickly in this position but it's black to move so black plays bishop c5 because the bishop was uh, anyway attacked on d6 so it had to move to a better diagonal and it does uh, here simply white continues with rook b1 uh, with the idea of uh, keeping an eye on the b7 square and rook c8 normal developing move and here white plays the move queen to d3 this is a good move by uh, sultan khan because it immediately threatens a knight and threatens to win a pawn uh, the knight really doesn't have very many retreat squares so for the text continuation is forced which is f5 and after f5 uh, white is very happy to take the pawn and passant and after e takes on f6 again knight takes on f6 seems to be the only logical move in this position once this middle game position has been reached now white has to decide on on the plans and and how to kind of activate the bishop naturally he wants to play something like e4 which will bring the bishop to life uh, but immediately that is not not possible uh, black may also have some plans of pushing the pawn to d4 uh, and then get getting the pawn pawn mass moving in the center perhaps playing something like uh, d4 followed by uh, e5 uh, so here uh, as a good defensive resource uh, just something like e3 is played which which prevents the pawn advance and also kind of shuts the shuts out the bishop uh, which was in an active diagonal uh, now uh, maybe white can continue to put pressure on the b pawn so so seeing this uh, ch just plays uh, queen to e7 which keeps an eye on the b pawn and here uh, after bishop to c3 uh, which which now there's a direct attack on the e, on the e pawn so that on the b pawn so that needs to be protected right so here i think uh, it is a little difficult to understand the the logic behind uh, this move bishop to d6 uh, but it was nonetheless played after bishop to d6 white simply continues with rook to b3 which is going to put pressure on the b7 pawn possibly doubling of the rooks along the b file so uh, for some reason um, ch kind of senses that the position is kind of slipping away and uh, this is going to be very critical but the best move in this position was probably continuing with uh, rook to c7 and maybe doubling the rooks and and, and playing on however uh, in this position uh, ch uh, makes a decisive mistake by putting the knight on d7 which is which is almost close to a blunder because it's just going to uh, blunder away a pawn which is a b7 pawn sultan khan picks up the b7 pawn without you know i mean that that is the best move in this position sultan khan just picks up the b7 pawn because uh, there is there is nothing else uh, there is no kind of cheeky combination that black would have uh, which would uh, which would kind of uh, uh, you know win back win back a pawn or win material 
Now, now the problem is the knight is pinned and the, and the natural looking knight to c5 uh, which seems to be probably what uh, I'm assuming that uh, CH would have thought because there isn't much here as well because after queen takes sorry rook takes on e7 uh, the queen on d3 uh, has to be taken therefore uh, knight takes on d3 and now there are a couple of win ways to win another pawn so one one way is simply bishop takes on e6 and uh, the other other alternative is 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 a more more direct uh, bishop takes sorry rook takes on g7 check and after king to h8 uh, the rook can either come back to c7 or you can simply play the retreat bishop to a1 and uh, now the position is, is very critical because now the discovered check can be lethal and therefore bishop to e5 is forced and after the exchange of the bishop and the rook going to a7 uh, this position is, is, is quite bad for, for black because the a6 pawn is attacked and if you continue to support the a6 pawn then something like e4 attacking <coughs> the central pawn pawn mass um, is is going to be very lethal and if you want to keep the position kind of closed up then white can simply continue with f4 followed by e5 it just leaves all the pawns in in, in a very very bad state the rook is attacked and uh, the other rook will come to play uh, bishop b7 is in play uh, so uh, this is not looking very good for 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 black so going back uh, after rook takes on b7 uh, white white continues with uh, rook to f7 uh, wanting to prevent the rook takes g7 line perhaps and uh, here uh, if you can uh, you can kind of pause for a minute and and try to think about what may be a good move for for white in this position. All right, so white in this position plays the very interesting retreat bishop to a1. Now the bishop to a1 is a very strong retreat because uh, the so the queen is now free to move and and now queen takes on a6 becomes a real threat, right? Uh, in this position, and uh, not only that, the rooks can can now double up, and there is going to be a lot of pressure on on the whites on the blacks uh, pawns and this pawn can now start the a pawn can start rolling up the board so uh, this is this is kind of causing a lot of lot of trouble and therefore rook to c4 which blocks the queen diagonal uh, is is played um, but one, one, once again sultan khan is uh, is up for the challenge and then e4 very nice move breaking up the center now the center cannot be kept closed anymore uh, d4 is not possible because the rook on c4 is hanging and now uh, this position is is quite bad for for black already so uh, that isn't very much you can do but to play knight c5 and uh, uh, this leads to four sequence of moves starting with rook takes on e7 knight takes on d3 and now rook takes on e6 which attacks the bishop as well and once the bishop moves to c5 uh, that is a triple attack on f2 but uh, this is this is totally ignored uh, by by sultan khan calculating calculated it through and uh, he, he first plays a check on e8 which exchanges the rook and now the problem is that this this x-ray is there on the king and now he just picks up the d pawn uh, very coolly okay so now this position if you look at the number of pawns if we count them there are six pawns for white and three pawns for black so this is really bad and this is just lost so so why black decides to just go for a gamble with knight takes on f2 which leaves this uh, this knight in a very very bad pin uh taking advantage of the fact that the bishop has to chaperone the knight just push the pawn to d6 and now the pawn is uh, moved to d6 uh it's going to go to d7 and go to go to d8 and and this is this is uh, looking looking bad so in desperation uh rook to c2 is played uh hoping for some counterplay and and bringing the rook in rook on time to uh to be able to kind of uh, stop the pawn maybe something like rook d2 or something like that so here uh, sultan khan plays uh 
a couple of beautiful bishop maneuvers. So the bishop from g2 now coming to e4 attacking the rook. Uh, white uh, black just picks up uh, one of the white pawns and now the other bishop uh, also develops itself right uh, from from a1 to c3. Right so he has picked up another pawn and it looks like uh, maybe black is is getting back his material. He is now only uh, is 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 now only one pawn down. He has got two of the pawns, but this position is very lost because after bishop to c6 attacking the rook, um, the bishop was attacked, of course, on e4. Um, rook coming to c4, uh, which attacks the the bishop, and now this nice, beautiful bishop retreat. So this beautiful bishop uh, v, <laughs> which was executed by Sultan, is is marvelous because now uh, after this bishop has retreated. Uh, the the knight is just lost because the knight cannot move and the king moves he's just going to pick up the knight so the so the only move is to uh play rook c1 of course that's not the only move but that is probably the the best try in this position and the idea here is that if if you just try to play in a hurry and play something like bishop takes f2 thinking that you're going to just win uh, after bishop takes f2 check you suddenly realize that the c6 bishop was hanging of course somebody like sultan is not going to fall for this trick so uh, he just continues very coolly with d7 and uh, that pawn is just going to queen so king to e7 and now a new queen for sultan khan king takes and after this another series of forced moves which is we start with bishop a5 check king to e7 and rook takes on rook takes rook on c1 and then knight comes to d3 check and rook takes on c5 knight takes on c5 and after he just moves the bishop to d5 and very close to the 40th move so very interesting game played between these two players and in this final position uh, black uh, resigned and uh, uh, very very beautiful instructive middle game uh, played by played by white uh, l with with kind of forceful piece play in the center leading to some forced liquidation and and winning material and finally kind of uh, winning the game so uh, that's all th that's all folks for today so I'll see you again next time uh, thank you for watching bye bye